Mario Party has always employed elements of luck and randomness in winning. If you're throwing a dice on a board, it naturally comes with the territory, but in the earlier titles, winning mini-games considerably raises the odds of victory, barring a late star swap with another player. Earlier Mario Party games not only grant coins to purchase helpful items and stars, but the end game bonuses actually reward skillful play. Unfortunately, Mario Party 10 drastically cuts back on mini-games, making you a passive observer instead of an active participant. <laughs> The core Mario Party mode is up to four players sharing a car, traveling through a course together, collecting mini-stars, and playing sporadic mini-games. Maps are straightforward with limited options to strategize. Dice block items are your only tool to control your course, but they're only beneficial in rare situations. Mini-stars appear randomly, so collecting them is a matter of pure luck. The cardinal sin, however, is that to play a mini-game, you have to land on a designated space. It's possible to only play a few mini-games each match, relegating the entire game to hitting the dice block and hoping it's your turn when mini-stars appear. <laughs> Amiibo Party attempts to capture the traditional rules of previous entries by giving players the chance to move around the board freely rather than carpooling. The goal is to collect stars purchased with coins won from mini-games, giving you a more active role in events. Unfortunately, the boards are very small, lack personality, and offer no room to vary tactics. The simple act of rolling dice is mind-numbing and requires each amiibo to be constantly shuffled on and off the gamepad. While it's nice that each minigame becomes more meaningful, each turn is far too tedious. Worse is that the vast majority of minigames are thoughtless, relying mostly on luck when deciding the winner. There are a few standouts like Rapid River Race that offer engaging mechanics, but they're limited in number. Yes! Bowser Mode is the last beacon of hope, but it isn't nearly enough to salvage the proceedings. Playing as Bowser is empowering and the ability to use the gamepad and minigames offer some amusing entertainment. However, there's no give and take. Bowser has a clear advantage, while the four players against him are stuck in the same dull routine. <laughs> In addition to the three core modes, there are a handful of minigame options. Badminton conjures memories of Mario Tennis, and Jewel Drop appeals to the puzzle sensibilities of Tetris. There's also a minigame tournament with up to eight players, but none of these modes offer enough excitement or reason to come back. Mario Party 10 feels like waiting in a line that never moves forward. It's completely possible to go through an entire match as a passive observer and still win first place. Occasional minigames spice things up, but their appearance is far too rare. Do not RSVP to this party.